Ugh. Smooth jazz, huh? Ooh. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, smooth jazz. Like, for the last 30 years, we've been basically inundated by this genre. Yeah. Every waiting room, every elevator, dentist's office. Uh. It's inescapable. Yeah, tell me about it. It's just so For generations, annoying. people have been exposing themselves to new and exciting genres of music. Yet, here we are, smooth jazz, exposing itself to us against our own will. As a result, smooth jazz has become a dirty word amongst the musically literate. I said say off. Uh... No, my show, that in the early 2000s, so the entire industry has rebranded smooth jazz as contemporary jazz. And I get why people are defensive, but I feel like it's unfair to write off an entire genre just because it has some tiny little saxophone in it. Janet Clark? That's me, excuse me. And that's me. why I, Corey Wong, hereby declare myself millennial ambassador to smooth jazz. We must open our eyes and ears to the possibilities that smooth jazz has to afford us. Smooth jazz will no longer be reserved for consummating a marriage or being on hold with an airline. It's our responsibility. No, our duty to bring smooth jazz into the future. Sit still, please. We can bring smooth jazz back. Back to the core. Back to Benson. George Benson, the original king of smooth. Anyway, it's just my opinion. Cool, man. This is Corey in the Wong Notes. I'm Corey Wong. Today's theme, cool. What's cool? What is uncool? Tell you what, I can't keep up. And that's why today, the band will be helping us determine through a highly democratic process, what is cool and what is uncool. They each have paddles. One side is green, cool. Other side, red, uncool. First up, Star Wars. Unanimous, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, hold, hold up though. Star Trek. Oh, Lamp, please have, what's this? We got one uncool, one unsure. Okay, next up, fanny packs. All right, you got, you got that one, all right. Not cool, Sonny? <laughs> what do you carry your stuff around in? You're not putting that sucker up front? No, man, it's going right here. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There's some musical inquiries that we have to check in on. Playing a C sharp over an E minor seven chord, cool or uncool? No go, Sonny? No. What are you talking about? You're talking this. You're, you're telling me I'm uncool right now. Yeah, I got the flat seven in there too, though. Cool or uncool? Midi horns. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Triggering drums in a mix. That's cool. All right, how about this low res video of Pitar playing drums in a White Snake cover band? Those jeans, are those jeans tight? What do you think, band? Oh my goodness. Whoa. It's white snake. What about drum solos where you let go of the sticks and you start playing with your hands? Giving your own hype after your own drum solo. Let's let's check this out. Let's let's see about this one. Oh 
<laughs> with the point at the end. No. The point at the end. We got a good show. Here we go. Let's do it. Music law. The Honorable Judge Corey Wong decides who is wrong and who is Wong. Okay, Mr. Rick, it says here you're a substitute bass player on a jazz brunch gig. Is that correct? Um, yes, Your Honor. So I show up to the gig, take out my bass, and he completely loses it. Your Honor, he brought a seven string bass to a jazz brunch. <gasps> seven strings on a jazz brunch? Are you familiar with the 1972 Geneva Convention on Bass String Appropriateness? No. What are you talking about? Bring in the chart! Mr. Rick, Jazz Brunch is clearly a class four gig. That means four strings. Maybe five, if you're John Patitrucci. This is an international war crime and violation of the Geneva Convention. If you like playing so many extra strings, then you'll have no problem playing the bass harp. What even is that? A 70 string monstrosity I just thought of.
Please don't. Sorry. Is this? Yes. Cool. How about Eddie Barbash on the Curve Soprano? Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.